Today, we will be looking at a blocked flow overpressure scenario in an oil and gas facility. We will walk through what causes them, what the consequences are, and most importantly, how to prevent them. Let's join the team as they respond to a potential overpressure event in the field. Pressure in the primary separator is increasing above its normal operating point. Let's keep an eye on it. If everything else looks like it's running smoothly, it could be a surge from the well. The high pressure shutdown just went off. That was fast. Make sure everything is in a safe state. We need to examine this. One of the wells was shut down this morning due to a high pressure event. How did that happen? Let's take a look at the PN IDs for the process equipment and piping around to the separator. The process starts at the well. The maximum pressure that the well is capable of producing is 40,000 kPAG. The piping downstream of the well has 10,000 pound flanges. The flange table tells us that under our operating temperature, this piping has a maximum operating pressure, or MOP, of around 68,000 kPAG. The pressure from the well is normally 12,000 kPAG and is reduced to 4,000 kPAG with a pressure control valve, or PCV. The piping downstream of the PCV is 600 pound and has an MOP of around 10,000 kPAG. The sour emulsion then travels through a line heater and then to the three-phase separator that experienced the high pressure earlier today. The vessel is rated to 9,000 kPAG. From there, gas is sent to a sweetening unit Condensate is sent to a degasser, and water is collected in a tank. Where should we be looking for the cause of the shutdown? The source of pressure for the separator is the well. Everything downstream of the separator is of lower or equal pressure. We know that pressure reached the separator and started to build. If we look at the flow trend upstream of the separator, it appears the flow rate suddenly dropped around 8.30 this morning, right before the shutdown. This looks like a blocked flow over pressure case. What could be the cause of the blocked flow? There are several things that could cause a blocked flow over pressure. Manual valves inadvertently close, control valves failing closed, freezing or hydrate formation in the lines, or the plugging of strainers and orifices. We can rule out freezing and hydrate formation. We have methanol injection downstream of the wells that the operators checked was working just this morning. We also have a line heater that keeps the temperature of emulsion from the wells much higher than what's required to form a hydrate or ice plug. Hydrates usually take a long time to form, several hours at least. The pressure spike would have been more gradual. Which flow path downstream of the vessel would cause an overpressure? A blockage on the water line wouldn't cause an overpressure. That line is normally closed unless the vessel needs to be drained. The same can be said for the condensate line. There is a level control valve which is set to open when a certain condensate level is reached in the vessel. Closing either of those flow paths would just build up water and condensate in the vessel until it was carried away through the gas line. However, if the gas line were closed, the pressure could build high enough to overpressure the separator. How far downstream of the separator could the blocked flow be? The next piece of major equipment downstream of the separator is a sweetening tower. The sweetening tower has a rated pressure of 9,000 kPAG, which is the same as the separator. There are no spec breaks between the two pieces of equipment, and their connecting piping is 600 pound with an MOP of around 10,000 kPAG. If the blocked flow were downstream of the sweetening tower, the sweetening tower pressure would have increased as well. Therefore, we know the blocked flow was between the separator and the tower. There are three manual valves, a flow meter, and a pressure control valve between the two. The manual valves were all open when we checked after the event. The flow meter was also removed and was clean. That means the pressure control valve was the element that failed closed. Let's make sure we replace the control valve and ensure the cause of failure won't be repeated. We don't want to have another situation like this arise that we can avoid. What would have happened if there was no shutdown in the vessel? If there had been no high pressure shutdown at the vessel, the PSV would have opened a flow path to the flare. If that didn't work, the separator would have overpressured, releasing sour gas, condensate and water inside the building. A source of ignition nearby like a pump, vehicle or even static could have ignited the release and caused an explosion. If anyone had been in the area, they could have been killed. 
It's lucky we had a good design and included the right amount of safeguards in the HAZOP. An operator could have been right there. Blocked flow overpressure is a serious hazard when dealing with pressurized equipment. There are some important things to look out for to identify and prevent overpressure from occurring. First, what is the source of the pressure? Sources of pressure include pumps, compressors, and wells. Next, where are the pressure spec breaks, and what is the maximum pressure that each piece of equipment and connecting piping can withstand? Comparing source pressure to rated pressures will identify if it is credible for an overpressure. Finally, if any point along a flow path is blocked and overpressure is credible, we must ensure there are enough safeguards like shutdowns and reliefs in place to protect all the affected equipment.